Lately, I was browsing YouTube and I saw this comment on a video I was watching. The video I was watching was about how the UK's values were once shaped by Christianity. And looking around the internet, similar questions to this one and other comments can be found relating to hell and judgment. Hell is a topic which is almost taboo in modern society. But most major world religions and most ancient religions, including the ancient Greeks and Roman pantheism, contained something equivalent to hell. Hell has always been seen as a threat to the wicked and the ultimate justice for those who have done evil acts. And in the past, people just, well, they generally accepted this concept of hell and would do anything to escape it. This is one of the reasons why in the Middle Ages, the Roman Catholic Church was able to make so much money selling indulgences, which were pardons from punishment granted by the Pope. Despite this historic belief, people today shy away from the concept of hell and the concept of a God who would punish people for making mistakes. But why is there a hell for humans? And why do seemingly small sins or crimes result in eternal punishment. Judaism, Islam and Christianity all share a very similar concept of hell and all three link the reason for humanity's punishment to the creation account. Judaism and Christianity of course share the exact same creation account while Islam's account of creation is quite similar, but it does have some slightly different details. Essentially though, in all three, God creates the universe as we know it, and he decides that it's pretty good. He then creates mankind and puts him on earth to pretty much run the planet. He then, to give the humans freedom to obey or disobey him, places a tree in the great garden which they are not allowed to eat from. Of course, as we all probably know the story, Satan comes along, convinces the woman to eat from it, and she convinces the man to eat from it, and they are cast out from God's presence, and the world goes into a state of decay. This sounds like a simple story, but the story, when unpacked, explains a lot of the belief of Judeo-Christian religions especially regarding punishment and hell. So let's unpack it. God in this account did not want people to be robots. He wanted them to have the freedom to decide what they wanted to do, including whether or not they obeyed him. Because of this, he put the tree known as the tree of the knowledge of good and evil within the grounds of the Garden of Eden. But he warned them that they were designed to be with him and he also warned them that you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. Well, things went well for a while, but then the devil posing as a beautiful serpent comes and convinces the woman to eat from the tree, telling her, God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. This was the desire which caused sin. It was wanting to be like God. Now, let's be honest. Who would not want to become a God or become like a God? You could do whatever you want. You could fly around making things, create a messy round of people. Uh, to be honest, it really reminds me of how we play video games. But this is what the Bible, the Torah and Quran say original sin was. Sin was openly saying, I don't want or need God. I'm going to be my own God. Because of this, mankind was left to his own devices and God essentially said, Okay, fine, have it your way. But there will be consequences. Mankind now had to work to provide for themselves. 
and without God's presence, the world began to decay and diseases emerged, etc, etc. And this is also where hell comes into the picture, as hell is the ultimate fulfillment of being outside of God's presence. As even though the earth decays a bit, the Bible shows that God still gives what's called common grace and stops things from becoming as bad as hell. You might think, well, that was the original people. Why would it affect people after that? And the simple answer is because people after this point are born into a fallen, decaying world outside of God's kingdom. Imagine this. Hawaii, for example, decides that it's had enough of America and decides to break away from the US. Generations later, years go by and life is hard. People are poor and the country is a complete mess. Some people try to go to the US, but they find that they don't have any rights as citizens. Well, what has happened? The actions of a few leaders in the past represented all of the people of Hawaii. And this is what happens here as well. The actions of the original leader, Adam, has impacted all of the future generations. You might say, yeah, I understand that, but what about hell? Why then is hell eternal? This was only one little crime, and most people really aren't that bad. Well, remember, hell is the ultimate example of being outside of God's presence. Thus, the decision to remain outside is, in a sense, mankind's decision to make. But it is also important to remember who the scriptures say that God is. For example, it says God is eternal, God is infinite, God is all-powerful, God is just and righteous. The scriptures of course say tons of other stuff, and of course Islam, Christianity and Judaism have some unique ideas, but the important point is this, that God is the highest possible being with the most authority in the entirety of everything. And this is important to consider when considering the punishment. Now imagine you decide to throw an egg at me. What would the consequences be? Well, at the least, I would get annoyed. And at most, maybe you would get a warning from a court or something for doing it. But then replace me with a big businessman like, say, Elon Musk. Well then, you might get sued or maybe grabbed by his private security. Finally, replace me and Musk with President Trump. You ran into the White House and somehow got to him. There's a real possibility that you would be shot before you made it to him and you definitely would be arrested. And this is for something that's quite minor, like throwing an egg. But basically, what I'm saying is, the amount of power and position someone has, the larger the punishment for the crime, even if the crime is a relatively small one. So when dealing with God, you can multiply any human consequences by nearly infinity and get the consequences. This is why all three religions create means to avoid this punishment. Judaism and Islam both making the law and submittance the means to making things right with God, while Christianity recognizes that it's impossible for humans to compensate an infinite crime and thus, in Christianity, God takes the punishment himself. To summarize, the story of creation found in the scriptures state that the reason for pain is a rejection of God. When man rebelled against God, they essentially said that they wanted to be their own God. This rebellion affected all future generations. The punishment for crimes fits the victim. And out of patience and grace, God didn't allow man to be destroyed, but created a bridge back to him. This is the law in Judaism and Islam, and Jesus' sacrifice in Christianity. This video probably created more questions than it answered. And of course, it only covered Judaism, Islam and Christianity. I'm looking forward to seeing the discussion below. 
But stay tuned next time as we're going to talk about the devil and who he is. And in a future video, we're also going to look at the concept of hell in history and in general. Thanks for watching. As you may have noticed, we now have a Patreon. If you would like to support the show through Patreon, then please click on the link above or below the video. By supporting the channel, you help us to continue making content and hopefully help us to make better content in the future. Thanks again for watching.